as you can see, we are getting into the sizing of a water system today. This is the drawing that was in the intro, and I made some slight adjustments to it. But this is the system we are going to use as an example on how to size a water system. Before we get into this, let's go ahead and talk about the code a little bit. So we'll move this out of the way. And we'll start getting into the code. Section 610. Let's get this thing into focus a little bit. And focus this, this thing in. Oh, so much better. So much better. Okay. Sizing of a potable water pipe. Or sizing of a potable water system. The size of each water meter and each potable water supply pipe from the meter or other source of supply to the fixture supply branches, risers, fixtures, connections, outlets, or other uses shall be based on the total demand and shall be determined according to the methods and procedures outlined in this section. Water piping systems shall be designed to ensure that the maximum velocity allowed by the code and the applicable standard are not exceeded. Where a water filter, water softener, backflow device, tankless water heater, or similar device is installed, the pressure loss through such devices shall be included in the pressure loss calculations of the system, and the water supply pipe and meter shall be adequately sized to provide for such a pressure loss. No water filter, water softener, backflow device, or similar device regulated by this code shall be installed in a potable water supply piping where the, installation water, where the installation of such device produces an excessive pressure drop in such water supply piping. So pressure means a lot when we size a water system because without the proper amount of pressure, you're not going to get the flow that you need to go through these pipes. So if a system is vastly undersized, uh, let's say you're taking a shower and then somebody flushes the toilet well, if the system's undersized, then the cold water is not going to meet the demand of the shower anymore because it's being utilized in the water closet. So when you flush, the hot water comes through and it shocks the heck out of you. That's what they're talking about. Uh, such devices shall be of a type approved by the authority having jurisdiction shall be tested for flow rating and pressure loss by an approved lab or recognized testing agency. And then you have up here, sorry, the quantity of water required to be supplied to every plumbing fixture shall be represented by fixture units. And that's going to be shown in table 610.3, which is on the next page. Uh, equivalent fixture values shown in that table include both hot and cold water demand. So what they mean by that, it's very important that you understand this. Let's say, and we'll use a lab as an example. Okay, so we all know that a lavatory is essentially the sink in the bathroom, right? So here you have a lav. And there's your sink, and here's your faucet up here. So you have your faucet, and then you got the, you know, the little hot and cold handles, right? This has a fixture unit value of one fixture unit. Okay. So that's the value of a lavatory. I turn on the cold, water comes out, so the cold water's on, I get one fixture unit. That's the value I get. I turn off that cold water. I turn on my hot water, my value is one fixture unit. If I turn on the hot and the cold, my fixture unit value is one fixture unit. If you remember in chapter four, we were talking about how much water comes out of the faucet. Well, this is exactly what we're talking about. No matter how, no matter what you got going on, it's still that much water coming through that spout. Okay. So your fixture unit value does not change no matter how the routing of the piping goes. I can go a straight route from the meter. So here's my meter. I can go straight there because it's coming in cold straight to the cold side, one fixture unit. I can go this way, tee off, go through my water heater, right? Come over, 
feed in to the hot side, still one fixture unit. This is going to play in when we do our sizing exercise. Okay, so no matter which direction I go, I have to provide that fixture unit value, right? So I'm counting this fixture up this way. I'm counting this fixture this way, but I'm only counting. So if I'm feeding this and this is all I'm feeding, I got one fixture unit. If I'm feeding it this way, I got one fixture unit. If I'm feeding it this way, I got one fixture unit. Okay, so let's move on and hopefully it'll make sense the further along we go. We're up here. Systems within the range of table 610.4 shall be permitted to be sized from, the from that table or by the method in accordance with section 610.5. Uh, oh yeah, 610.5, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, listed parallel water distribution systems shall be installed in accordance with their listing, but at no time shall a portion of the system exceed maximum velocity allowed by code. So we cannot exceed our maximum velocity. Uh, so section 610.5, we do that in plumbing three, and that's in the appendix, and it's all based, appendix A, is all based on flow restriction, distance, elevation, pressure loss. So that, it, it's more of an engineered method than, than what is provided here. Um, just so you know, the table 610.4, which is where we get all of our sizing calculations, that is all those numbers that come on that table. And we'll, again, we'll get there in a, in a few minutes. But all the numbers that come from that table are derived from this sizing situation where we use appendix A. Section 610.6, .6, friction and pressure loss. Except where the type of pipe used and the water characteristics are such that no decrease in capacity due to the length of the service is expected, the friction loss data shall be obtained from the fairly rough or rough charts in Appendix A of this code. Friction or pressure loss in a water meter, valve, and fittings shall be obtained from the same sources. Pressure loss through water treating equipment, backflow prevention devices, or other flow restricting devices shall be computed in accordance with Section 610.2. The conditions, section 610.7, and we'll go ahead and scroll down here for a sec. So now the conditions for using 610.4. On a proposed water piping installation sized using 610.4, the following conditions shall be determined. One, total number of fixture units is determined from table 610.3. They're equivalent fixture units for the fixtures to be installed. Number two, Develop length of supply pipe from the meter to the most remote outlet. So that's your total, total distance. You need, in distance, you lose pressure. So they already have all that figured out for us. So we need to know which chart to utilize. And when we get there, you'll see. Difference in elevation between the meter or other source of supply and the highest fixture or outlet. Number four. Pressure in the street main or other or another source of supply at the locality where the installation is to be made. So we have to know what kind of pressures we're working with, right? And then in localities where there is a fluctuation of pressure in the main throughout the day, the water piping system shall be designed on the basis of the minimum pressure available. We use the minimum pressure because that's the lowest pressure we can possibly operate at. I mean, if we sized everything at the highest and then all of a sudden you have a 20 pound drop in pressure every day, we're sizing it to the highest and it, it can't keep up when it's at the lowest. So you always size to the lowest pressure available. Okay. Now, the size of the meter and the building supply being used, right? So now we have the first first item that we have to size. We have to size the water meter coming in based on the fixture units and the distance and the pressures and everything else. So we have to figure out which meter we can use. We also will figure out what the supply going to the building is going to be. The size of the meter and the building supply shall be determined as follows. Number one, 
determine the available pressure at the water meter, right? So we figure out what our minimum pressure is. Add or subtract, depending on positive or negative elevation, a half a pound for each foot of difference in elevation between such source of supply and the highest water supply outlet in the building or on the premises. So let's say it's 10 feet high, right? So we have the meter and then the highest fixture is 10 feet above the meter. We are going to subtract from our minimum pressure. You have 10 PSI. Every foot, what they're telling us in this chapter is we take half of this, okay? So if, I'm sorry, not 10 PSI, 10 feet, okay? We're gonna take half of this and that's five PSI. So in 10 feet, we are going to lose five pounds of pressure. So if I had 50 PSI at the meter, I can only utilize, because it's taking that five pounds off, this negative five pounds is the five pounds necessary to get up to that 10, 10 foot outlet. So if I start with 50, I end up with 45 PSI. So that is my operable, operable? That is my pressure that I'm going to be used, my usable pressure, okay? Right there, 45 PSI. So that's your elevation change. Now that we have all that figured out, which is down here, it says use the pressure range group within which this pressure will fall using table 610.4. When we get to the sizing, I will show you all of that. And then we select the length column that's equal to or longer than the required length. Equal to or longer than the required length. Okay, that's the column we have to pick. So if I have a total developed length of 100, we'll say 96 feet. We can't use the 80 foot column. We have to use the 100 foot column. Then you follow down the column to a fixture unit value equal to or exceeding the total number of fixture units required by the install. These are all handouts that are attached in your program. Uh, for you to actually utilize. And I also have a step-by-step -step, uh, write-up for you as well. So you follow down the column, you find a fixture unit value that is equal to or exceeding the total number of fixture units that are required for the installation. Then you go from that one and you run, you run this way all the way over where it says size of meter and that gives you the size of the meter. And then the other column on the right of that will give you the size of your building supply. Um, little key note here, right here. No building supply pipe shall be less than three quarters of an inch. Okay, now that's the supply going into the building. All right, that's not like one of the branches going uh, when you're inside the building. That's actually going to the building from the meter. Cannot be less than three quarters of an inch. The size of the branch. Where table 610.4 is used, the minimum size of each branch shall be determined by the total fixture unit served by that branch. And then following the steps in 610.8, no branch piping shall exceed the total demand in fixture units for the system computed from table 610.3. This is a code change from the last code uh, adopted. What they mean here is, let's say I have a total fixture unit value. My entire house takes 20 PSI. 20 fixture units. 20 PSI. Depending on the location of the water heater, this number could increase, okay? Remember I told you with the water heater no matter the routing, you still have to count for those fixtures, right? Even though some of those fixtures may be already removed on the cold side before it gets to the water heater, you still have to feed. So let's put it this way. You have a lav and you have another lav, all right? You have, we'll put the water heater over here, okay? I have a cold line coming through, 
we'll use a different color pen. I have a cold line coming in, right? I'm feeding that laugh. We'll say we'll go this way and we'll feed this laugh. But I come over here and feed the water heater, okay? You with me so far? And then out of the water heater, I feed that laugh. And I feed that laugh. So let's do a fixture unit count of what we got. Okay. Right here. How many labs do I have? Two. So that's my fixture unit count right there. How many labs do I have on this line? I have one lab, right? Because the cold water is coming this way. But, now here's the but. If I am going to turn the hot for this on, this lav is going to get fed through my water heater. So, this is the furthest pipe. This is one fixture unit. This piece of pipe right here has got one fixture unit on it because it's got, it just has the lav. This piece of pipe right here, the hot, it has one fixture unit on it. Right? This piece of pipe coming out of the water heater, how many fixture units are on this one? You have two labs which means a fixture unit value of two. This pipe feeding this water heater, which feeds these two labs, has to have a fixture unit value of two. Look at it this way. Let's say the hot water heater doesn't have any gas. It's not heating any water. It's not hot water, it's cold water. The cold water's feeding into the lab this way, right? So this lab is one. So this piece of pipe right here, that's one fixture unit. How many fixture units is on this one? This code section that we just read, right here, it says no branch piping shall exceed the total demand in fixture units, right? I told you right here, my total demand was two. So even though I have one, la one here and two here, it's going to be two. Because the value of this lab, no matter if it's coming this way or this way, it's still one. Right? This is still one. So, mathematically, and routes mean everything, I have to feed that lab. I have to feed it this way. I also have to feed it this way. Play that back a few times if it confuses you. Um, take your time with this. It's all based on logic. Okay? And pressure, of course. But I mean the whole... What, what's in the pipe. It's all based on logic. This one. Sizing for flush valves. We'll do it real quick. Okay? We will do it real quick. We're using table 610.4 to size a water system serving flushometer valves. Those are the commercial ones, you know, the really nice chrome with the flushometer and the little hand, no tank, you know. Um, the number of the flushometer fixture units assigned to every section of pipe, whether branch or main, shall be determined by the number and category of flushometer valves served by that section of pipe in accordance with table 610.10. The piping supplying a flushometer valve shall be not less in size than the valve inlet. And these flushometer valves on a water closet, it's a one inch, uh, one inch line. On a urinal, it's a three quarter line, okay? So we're using table 610.10 to size the water, water piping. Care shall be exercised to assign the flushometer fixture units based on the number and category of fixtures being served. So if I have one flushometer valve, okay, so one piece of pipe, the only thing that's on it is one flush valve. Your fixture unit value for that flushometer is 40, okay, 40 fixture units. In other words, it's like hooking up 40 lavatories, okay. So the fixture units that are uh, assigned for your water closets and similar 10, uh, 10 unit fixtures is 40. But what if I have two flushometer valves? 
individual fixture units assigned and decreasing value. So the first one is 40, the second one is 30. Gives you the total fixture unit value on that piece of pipe, feeding two flushometers, 70 fixture units. What if I have three flush valves? First one's 40, second one's 30, third one's 20, which gives me a total of 90 fixture units. So you can see that it's decreasing in value because if you did 40 per and you're at three, it should be 120. But like I said, because you're operating three flush valves, the fixture unit value is going down, decreasing in value. Four flushometer valves, the fourth one is 15 fixture units. Total of 105 fixture units for that one piece of pipe. So I have four water closets running on the same line, on the same wall. I have a fixture unit value of 105. When? All four are piped in there. When I get down to the third, to three, so it goes four, and then I drop that one and go to three, 90, two, 70. Last one, 40. Okay? Five or more, each one after that is 10 fixture units. Down here, this is for urinals. So one urinal is 20, two is 15, three is 10, four is eight, five or more is five each. Okay? So you just end up doing the math. Two, two urinals is 35, right? And then on the next page, they actually have a nice little example on what you got going on. So here's an example. Up here, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So they want to know what your fixed unit values are for each one of these letters. So since A only has one fixture unit, it's one water closet, 40 fixture units. B has two water closets on it. See, it's got two water closets there. So you have two water closets, 70 fixture units. And then I go with, I'm picking up a urinal on this, right? So my water's coming this way, right? I don't size starting where it's coming in. I size based on the, at the end of the line. So much easier to size that way. Size at the end of the line, work your way back, okay? So C has the urinal, two water closets, which is 70, plus one urinal, which is 20, gives you 90 fixture units. And then D, picking up another urinal. So two water closets plus two urinals is 105, right? E, two water closets, two urinals, and a lav, 106 fixture units. Follow me? F. Two water closets, two urinals, two labs, 107 fixture units. So each one of these branches, so to speak, is equivalent. So S, L, so you go to L, L is the same thing, 107 fixture units. S, the same thing, 107 fixture units, right? Just a little bit more. Okay. So G, H, I, J, K, L. Layouts a little bit differently. So you can see G is just one lav or one fixture unit, two labs, two fixture units. So it's in reverse order. But you see you still get the same result, 107 fixture units. But let's go to M. Okay. So now we go to M. How many water closets are on M? One, two, three, four. So for M, four water closets, that's a total of 105 fixture units. How many urinals? Two, four. Four urinals, 53 fixture units. Four labs, 162 fixture units. So now you got 107 here and 107 here, so you would think this would be 214, but it's not, it's only 162 because you're adding everything up and it's decreasing in value, okay? Then you got this one, decreasing order again. It's kind of mixed matched all the way to S. S, you get 107 fixture units. Makes sense. Right? But you go to T. So now we have a total of six water closets for 125 fixture units, six urinals for 63 fixture units. Six labs for six fixture units, equaling out 194 fixture units. This is huge on how you do this. And it's all based on volume. 
and occupancy and frequency of use. So this is an engineered method for public fixtures, okay? So sizing systems for the flushometer tank, the size of branch serving flushometer tanks shall be consistent with the sizing procedures for flush tank water closets. Because it's a tank, it flushes out and it refills, the tank refills. It's not one of these flushometers where it's just volume and then stops. It's a tank style. So you're just dumping the water and refilling it. Sizing for velocity. Water piping systems shall not exceed the maximum velocity listed in this section or Appendix A. Back up here to copper, right there. Copper tube systems. The maximum velocities in copper and copper alloy tube and fittings shall not exceed eight feet per second in a cold water and five feet per second in hot water. That's as fast as we can go through our copper piping, okay? Eight feet per second. Tubing systems using copper fittings. Maximum velocity through copper fittings, okay? Other than, um, Copper fittings in tubing other than copper shall not exceed eight feet per second in cold and five feet per second in hot. So it doesn't matter what type, anything used in copper fittings, eight feet per second in cold, five feet per second in hot. The exceptions to section 610. The provisions of this section relative to the size of water piping shall not apply to the following. So these are the things that don't apply to the sizing method. Water supply piping systems designed in accordance with recognized engineering procedures acceptable to the authority having jurisdiction. So if it's an engineered deal, cool. Uh, doesn't apply to alteration of or minor additions to existing installations provided the authority finds that there will be an adequate supply of water to operate the fixtures. Uh, replacement of an existing fixture or, or, or appliance. You don't have to resize it if you're replacing what's there. Uh, piping that is part of the fixture equipment. Unusual conditions where, in the judgment of the authority, an adequate supply of water is provided to operate fixtures and equipment. And the size and material of irrigation water piping installed outside of a building or structure and separated from the potable water supply by means of an approved air gap or backflow prevention device are not regulated by this code. Potable water piping system supplying each such irrigation system shall be adequately sized as required elsewhere in this chapter to deliver the full connected demand of both the domestic use and the irrigation system. And then I told you I'd talk a little bit about drinking water treatment units. Drinking water treatment units shall comply with the following standards. Water softeners shall comply with that standard. Ultraviolet water treatment system shall comply with the, the other standard, NSF 55. Reverse osmosis drinking water uh, treatment system shall comply with NSF 58. Drinking water distill, distillation system shall comply with NSF 62. So you have 42, 53, 44, 55, 58, and 62. Depending on the system that you use to treat your water is the different standard that you have to feel, uh, deal with. Air gap discharge. Discharge from drinking water treatment units shall enter the drainage system through an air gap in accordance with table 60331 or an air gap device that complies with 603.2 NSF 58 or IATMO PS 65. And again, table 603.2 was that whole air gap distribution table that we talked about earlier uh, in, the, uh, in the other video. Connection tubing. The tubing to and from drinking water treatment units shall be of a size and material as recommended by the manufacturer and the sizing of residential softeners. Use the water softeners shall be sized with a table 611.4. So 611.4 is right there. Right here. Required size of softener connection. So you have three quarter size based on number of bathrooms, two. Note two, an additional water closet and lab is permitted. Well, that was nice of them. 
Required size of a softener, one inch. This is what it is. You got up to four bathrooms, okay? And then they have note three here, which is over four bathroom groups, the softener size shall be engineered for the specific installation, okay? So this is the table that you use for a residential water softener. Pretty basic, two to three quarter, one inch, you know? Anything higher than that, you gotta get it engineered and it's gotta go through appendix A. Now, I'm gonna close this up because I did something pretty cool. Thought of it. I'm very, very happy that I thought of this actually. I made copies of table 610.3 and 610.4 so that when I go through this, I can go ahead and bring in table 610.3 and table 610.4. So, first things first, what we are going to do is we are going to take a tally for total fixture unit value. I need total fixture units, okay? I'm going to make a list. I'm going to say hose bibs, uh, water closets, labs, tubs, or tub and showers, showers, uh, laundry sinks, clothes washers, dishwashers. Uh, what else is missing from a, a standard house? Anything? Anybody think of anything? Pretty much got everything I, I have here. Yes. Cool. Right on. Notice how I didn't put water heaters in there because water heaters do not have a standing fixture unit value. They technically don't have a fixture unit value. They are just part of the water system, okay? So let's do a count on what we have here with what we have here on my fixture unit value. So first, let's go ahead and talk about water closets, okay? How many water closets do I have? Looks like I have two water closets. So we'll say we have two water closets. Sorry. This is going to get tricky. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit for just a few moments, huh? Zoom out a bit. This will make life a little bit easier. Oh, yeah, much better. Okay. We didn't touch hose bibs yet. This is quantity. All right. Uh, how many laundry sinks do I have? I got one laundry sink right there, right? So we'll say there's one of those. How about a tub and shower? I have one tub and shower. How about showers? Do I have any showers? I have a tub and shower. Okay, that's... That's a bathtub or bathtub shower combination. Totally different. So I don't have a shower. We're going to cross that out. What about CW? CW is a clothes washer. So there's your clothes washer right there. So I got one of those. How about a dishwasher? How many dishwashers do I have? Aside from my two boys, I got one that actually operates on water. So that's one of those. Lav, where there's a water closet, there's a lav, has to be at least one. I mean, you can do multiple lavs, but you know, you have to have at least one. So here's one here and there's one there. So I have two lavs. Hose bibs, I did hose bibs last, but put it first because hose bibs are unique, okay? So how many hose bibs do I have? One, two, three, three hose bibs. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Hopefully you can read it. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to have to blow this one up. Okay. So let's blow it up. Hopefully that that's good enough. You should be able to see that. Hopefully. If not, increase, zoom, do something. Water closets. 
we're going to talk about water closets. Water closets are down here at the bottom, right here. Okay. I have several different water closets here. This is a 1.6 gallon per flush gravity tank. That is pretty much standard. That's what we have in every house, unless you want to go fancy, you know, whatever. Then you have the flushometer tank, but again, it's a tank. Then you have the flushometer valve. Flushometer valve, see footnote number seven, down here says we're sizing flush valve or flushometer systems See section 610.10. .10. We already went over that, so we know what that's all about. Water closet greater than 1.6. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. We don't do these. Cross that out. Cross that out. So really, this is the one we want right here. We want that water closet with a gravity tank. Okay? Going up to the top of this chart, you have different series of, of uh, columns minimum fixture branch size private public or assembly well we're utilizing private okay and we're going to size systems based on private use everything in this class is going to be private use okay so i go in this one column and we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll make it easier since we're down here and we can't read up there this column right here, this is the private. Okay. And then it goes public. And then assembly. Okay. There. So we're using private. How many water closets did I say I had? Two. Two water closets, right? I think we can, I think we might be able to do this. Okay. Private use, fixture unit value, right there, 2.5. So for two water closets, my fixture units, two at two and a half is gonna give you five fixture units, okay? My lavatory, Check it out. I have lavatories right here. This is the private use column, one fixture unit. See, lavatory, one fixture unit. So I have two labs. That's gonna give me two fixture units, one bathtub and shower. Here I have a shower, right? That's per head. And that's two fixture units per head, but it's not a bathtub. So I go up here and I see bathtub or combination bath shower, right? That's what I want. That's four fixture units. Holy cow. Four fixture units. A shower is less because it's just a shower head, right? Bathtub, bathtub's four fixture units because look at the size of that spout, right? That spigot's huge. That's that's what she said. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, laundry sink. Let's look at laundry sink. I don't have laundry sink in here. So what we do is, check this out. Sinks. I've got bar sinks, clinical faucets, clinical flushometer valves, kitchen sinks, laundry sinks. Up, oh, yeah, laundry sinks. One and a half fixture units. Okay. So my laundry sink. One laundry sink. One and a half fixture units. What about my clothes washer? Clothes washer. Back in the day, oh geez. Okay, let me rephrase that because I don't want to sound too old. When I went in, when I was going through the apprenticeship, this wasn't called a clothes washer. It was called the auto washer. So the code changed to, to clothes washer because it's easier to remember exactly what it is. But a clothes washer has a fixed unit value of four. So we have the clothes washer running at four fixture units. Then you have a dishwasher. Dishwasher is kind of cool because it's one of the only fixtures that is specific to the hot. Okay, but it needs to be sized in as your total demand. 
It's a hot line. It's hot water. But like I said, if that hot water heater didn't have any gas to it, you'd still be feeding this dishwasher through that hot line. Okay? So a dishwasher, domestic dishwasher, has a fixed unit value of 1.5. So we have 1.5 for the dishwasher. That takes us to this hose bib. I have three hose bibs. How much is a hose bib worth? Worth. Worth. One hose bib. Two and a half. So I'm going to put that right here. Hose bib equals two and a half. Okay. What's it say underneath the hose bib? Hose bib. Each additional. Number eight. We'll go to number eight in a second. Hose bib. Each additional. One. So the first hose bib, because I have three, first hose bib's two and a half. The other two hose bibs, so we'll call this number one hose bib, and this is hose bib two and three, is one a piece, so that's two. So I have a total value of my hose bibs as two and a half plus another two, one per hose bib, of 4.5. Okay? So these are all the fixtures in the house. That is my total fixture unit value. So adding all of this up, you get 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 13, 18, 22 and a half fixture units. Okay. So I have a 22 and a half fixture unit value. I told you we would go to number eight in the notes. Let's go to number eight in the notes. We're going to blow it up too. So I want to make sure we get to read this and we understand it. Reduced fixture unit loading for additional hose bibs is to be used where sizing total building demand, which is just what we did, right? We just calculated our total building demand at 22 and a half fixture units. It is to be used where sizing total building demand and for pipe sizing where more than one hose bib is supplied by a segment of water distribution pipe. The fixture branch to each hose bib shall be sized on the basis of two and a half fixture units. That means That means I have a line. I have a hose bib here, here, hose bib there, hose bib here, hose bib here. Correct? Just saying as an example, okay? My water flow is this way. I am going to size it coming in off of the main through here. This hose bib value is two and a half because note eight, the fixture branch to each hose bib shall be sized on the basis of two and a half fixture units. This hose bib, ah, sorry, this hose bib right here, this one line, two and a half fixture units. This hose bib here, It's one hose bib. That's all that's on this line. Two and a half fixture units. This one, however, that guy right here, I've got one, two hose bibs. As it's stated in there, the first hose bib is two and a half. But every additional one that's on that line is valued at one. So now, from two and a half and two and a half, I'm going to three and a half. That's the fixture unit value I have here, okay? You would think two and a half and two and a half was five. No, it's not five, it's three and a half. This value, this hose bib on this line by itself is two and a half, right? But here on this one, I have a fixture unit value of three and a half plus an additional hose bib. It's four and a half. 
And the breakdown of this one is the 2.5 and then the 1 and then the other 1. Okay? Uh, I believe it was, uh, I think it was George Bush that called it fuzzy math. But regardless, this is based on volume. This is based on, I really don't think we're going to be running three hose bibs at the same time kind of thing. Okay? So that's your value. And that's how you figure out hose bibs. Again, if this was confusing, just go back about five minutes, replay it until it starts to make sense. It's actually going to be one of the benefits of this, this whole um, online stuff. You'll be able to understand it a little bit better. We'll just keep it right there. Now, let's go to this. Actually, let's zoom out just a little bit more. We're going to need to look at a column. So I have a total fixed unit value or a total fixed unit demand of uh, 22.5, I believe. So my total fixture units is 22.5. What's my operating pressure? So my pressure is going to be what? Well, my minimum sweep pressure up here is 65 PSI. But the elevation from the meter to the highest fixture is 42 feet. So I take half of 42. Right? I'm going to take half of that. And it's going to give me 21. So that's 21 PSI that I'm losing off of 65. So then you take your 65, subtract 21, and you get 44 PSI. So my operating pressure for the entire house is going to be 44 PSI. Okay. Now, sizing this at 44 PSI with a total fixed unit value of 22 and a half, we're going to put this up to the corner right here so we can still see the meter size and this little column right here. This is extremely important because you're going to open up your book and you're going to be looking at this. A series of numbers, a lot of numbers, right? This is table 610.4. Quick rundown. This is your maximum allowable length. 40, 60, 80, 100. 150, 200, 250, 300, 400, 500, blah, 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 blah. Also, so this is the column that we're talking about. Boom. 200 feet goes in this column right here. 150 feet goes down this column right here. But check this out. I have a pressure range here between 30 and 45. I have a pressure range here between 46 and 60. And I have a pressure range over here over 60. The maximum allowable pressure is 80 PSI. That was based on uh, the, last, the last lecture that I gave on, uh, on chapter 6. So we have three pressure ranges to work from. So you see that the, there's a split, right? And it stops right here, right? And it stops right here, okay? So what's my operating PSI? Oh, sorry, I moved it up. So my operating pressure, PSI, is 44 PSI. Which one of these three does it fall into? This is 30 to 45, so guess what? 44 PSI, it's in here. I started, get rid of that one. I started at 65 PSI. So 65 PSI, don't cut it no more, right? Because of our elevation. So dropping it down to 44. I'm in here. What about my total developed length? I have a total developed length of 135 feet. 40 feet, I ain't going to make it. 60 feet, that's not going to make it. 80 feet, that's not going to make it. 100 feet, no. 100 feet, still not going to make it because I'm 135. 150 Will 135 fit in this 150 column? Absolutely, it'll fit in this 150 column. Okay? 
So we're going to size it based on 150 feet. I'm going to tell you that if this was 151 feet, you will not size it at 150 feet. You will take it to 200 and you will size it at 200. Okay? I'm telling you that because that is what the code requires. They didn't say this was 151 feet. They said this was 150. There's no fudge factor. There's none of that. This is it. That's what you got to do. Okay? So 151 feet takes you to 200. Fortunately for you, I put 135, which is easy. We're putting it at 150. So this is my column right here. These numbers I run off of. Okay? So I'm going to go down this column, the 150 column, until I hit a number. Okay, my total fixture unit value is 22 and a half. So I'm going to run down the 150 until I hit a number that is either equal to or greater than my 22 and a half PSI, uh, 22 and a half fixture units. Okay, 2, 9, 17, 20, 24. 24 is the one. Winner, winner, right? So we're going to take 24, and from here, look at this. I have meter and street service, so that's my, my water meter, and that's my building supply. So these are the two deals that I want to deal with, right? Let's not look at branches yet. We just want to look at building supply because this will also feed your branches as well. But, excuse me. I've been talking a while. Okay. Now, like I said, we're sitting at 24 fixture units. We come across here all the way over to the left because the first thing we need to do is find out what our meter is. So the meter, based on 20, based on 22 and a half fixture units, my meter size is three quarter, okay? So we put three quarter right there for the meter size, okay? And then, I got building supply, which is right here, okay? Or here, depending on how you want to look at it. This whole run of pipe. Technically, that's your building supply. Before the valve, before the shutoff valve, is going to be your building supply. My building supply, based on 24 fixture units, is inch and a quarter. So we're going to go ahead and make this inch and a quarter, okay? Now... All these numbers, I'd have to constantly sit there and go, okay, well, what's this one? Okay, and then you have to come over here and look. That's why I did this. This little guy right here, we're going to call that our cheat sheet, okay? Half-inch pipe at 150 feet. Total fixture unit value that I can put on a half-inch pipe with 150 feet is two fixture units. My three-quarter pipe at 150 feet, nine fixture units, okay? So we're going to say nine fixture units. One-inch pipe, so building supply and branches. But right now, because I already took care of the building supply and the meter, so right now I'm doing branches, okay? So you see how I have one-inch written twice? Well, which one of these am I going to use, right? 17 or 20 well what size is my meter three quarter so for a three quarter meter not a one inch meter for a three quarter meter my one inch pipe at 150 feet is going to be 17 so i can run 17 fixture units and then the inch and a quarter we already know it's 24 and then the inch and a half um, if you want, we can go ahead and do inch and a half, you know, doesn't bother me. So you go to inch and a half, you see inch and a half is written three times, but check this out. The lowest meter is one inch. Then it's an inch and a half meter, and then it's a two inch meter. So guess what? You just go to the lowest meter because it's the closest one to three quarter. And at that inch and a half is going to be. 56 fixture units so you can write 56 in here if you want it's fine same thing goes with two inch 
you have one, two, two, so, you know, we'll go to the one inch, and you can go ahead and, you can go ahead and write down your 85 fixture units. Right? Now, the reason why I did this is because now I could take my book, if I have it, and I can do away with it and not have to look at all these freaking numbers trying to calculate and figure it out all over again. So that's gone. Now I got my entire sheet, all my calculations, my water size, my meter size, my size going into the building, all of it's already calculated, right? So now all I have to do is go through and just figure out how many fixture units I have, okay? And to do that, you start at the back end and work your way in. And there's a couple of different things you can do here, okay? I mean, let's just, let's just say you started here, okay? And you can do it this way as well. When, when I did all those calculations on table 610.3, um, you can do this and write 4, 1.5, right? 2.5 for the water closet, right? 1.0 for the lav, hose bib. Hose bib's two and a half, right? This hose bib over here, it's two and a half. Because it's by itself, right? It's by itself. Dishwasher, 1.5. Kitchen sink, 1.5. Tub and shower, remember, tub and shower, all right? Not just the shower. So this is 4.0. The lav, 1.0. Water closet, 2.5. Did I get them all? No, not quite. I got to get this hose bib over here. 2.5 okay I believe that's everything yeah right on okay so the rest of these circles we're just going to put the fixed unit value in because we have this right here and it'll tell us what size it is okay so let's just say for the sake of argument we decide to start here let's see how far we can get clothes washers four so this piece of pipe right here has four fixed units means it's a three-quarter inch pipe this laundry sink serving in here is 1.5 that's a half inch pipe this piece of pipe between this T and that T feeds the laundry sink and the clothes washer so I have a total value of five and a half okay what about this pipe I, I, I don't know because I'm feeding the water heater I don't know how many fixture units are going through the water heater yet, so I have to calculate my size for the water heater. So you see, you can't start anywhere and just move along. You have to start at the furthest distance and work your way back. So guess what? The furthest distance is over here, dishwasher. So I have a dishwasher and a kitchen sink. Hot water here, hot water here. So this guy is three fixture units. Okay. Then I'm going to pick up my tub and shower here. That's four fixture units. Are, are you with me so far? Because that's not right. This is four fixture units. This is three fixture units. This is seven fixture units. Okay? So it is a seven, not a four. Okay? So now we're sitting at seven here because this piece of pipe has to feed the dishwasher, the kitchen sink, and the tub shower. Has to. Okay. Then we got one fixture unit. So we're still still working the, the hot line here, coming back. So we're picking up the lav. So this is a total of what? Seven plus one. So there's eight right here. Cool. What do I got over here? I got a lav coming through. All right? So I got a lav coming in. That lav is 1. So 8 plus 1. That's 9. Kit, clothes washer, laundry sink. Well, we size these out on the cold side there. It's the same thing on the hot. 5.5. Perfect example. Perfect example. I want to use the cold water on the laundry sink and the clothes washer. 
and burn in five and a half fixture units this way. But then I'm like, you know what? Forget that. I want to run my, I want to run hot water. So I want to do my laundry in hot and I want to run the laundry sink over here in hot as well. So now instead of my water going this way to the outlets, it's going this way. So it's diverting. That's why this five and a half matters. So I got five and a half there, got nine here, which makes this how much? Nine plus five, 14 and a half fixture units. Okay. So I have 14 and a half fixture units coming out of this water heater, which means coming into the water heater, I need 14 and a half. Okay. This right here, five and a half plus the 14 and a half gives me 20. Okay. So I have 20 fixture units right there. How about here? Can I make this one? Can I calculate this guy yet? No, because I haven't done these. So now I go back up here. I got a hose bib, two and a half. I got a kitchen sink, one and a half. So that's a total value of four. Okay. I got the two and a half and the one. So I got two and a half for my water closet, one for my lav. So this piece of pipe right here, this length that I didn't put a circle on, that is, here, I'll put a circle right here right now. There's my circle. Okay, so right here, I got two and a half and one. That's three and a half. Right? Plus the four. That's this guy right here. That's seven and a half. So I got seven and a half plus four right here for eleven and a half. Okay? This value here, guess what? It's right there. It's the hose, the hose bit, right? It's two and a half. Two and a half plus the water closet. That's what? Five plus one. That's six. So what's this one going to be? I got six this way. I got 11 and a half this way. What's it going to be? I'll tell you what it is. It is 16. Did you get 17 and a half? It can't be 17 and a half because on this run right here, I have kitchen sink, tub and shower, lav, water closet, water closet, lav, right? So I've got this hose bib and I've got that hose bib. The hose bib value, because on this one, I've got two hose bibs. Right? So the value changes. Remember that. Because I've got the two hose bibs. One of them is two and a half, and the other one is one. It's a total of three and a half. Right? Or a decrease in 1.5. I'm losing one and a half fixture units because I'm adding that extra hose bib on the line. So that takes me from 17 and a half to 16. Okay. Now, I didn't put one here either. Uh, let's do it right now. Let's go ahead and throw one right here. I have 16 here and 20 here. So what is this one going to be? It's not 36 because remember, my total fixture units 22 and a half. So right here, 22 and a half. That's what the size is. Because I'm feeding through here, this run. I am feeding the water heater. I still, let's, let's just look at it this way. I'm feeding the kitchen sink this way. Guess what? I'm feeding the kitchen sink through this line too, right? So I have to take the unit value this way, this way. That's why you add it up accordingly based on this, okay? Always. 
that's sizing right there. So it's the end of the video. Again, it's an example. Go back, take a look at it several times. This, which is table 610.4, this, which is table 610.3, all of those are in these modules. They're, they're, they're inputted in as links. You'll see it written as 610.4, 610.3, okay? Look at, that, look at them, look them up, go through them, go through this video repeatedly. Just go through it and go through it and go through it. Take the notes that you want to take, okay? But uh, definitely look it over because these are very important uh, processes and sizing uh, exercises that we have to do, not only in the field on occasion, especially if you do residential, um, but in order to pass the journeyman's exam, you have to successfully navigate through a sizing exercise for the water. So again, review it as much as you like and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I definitely hope you understood it and hope you liked it.